Did the largest impact site known on Earth occur in Australia? As of 2024, it appears as though all signs are pointing to a yes regarding this question. The Denaliquin impact site was announced late last year in 2023, though studies into it began in 2022, and I've been watching closely ever since then. After scouring Google Scholar, we have many signs that an impact with a size of 520 kilometers or 323 miles occurred here. This would make it the largest known impact site on our planet. For comparison, the largest proven impact site occurred in South Africa, with a crater size of 300 kilometers or 165 miles. And we've already released an episode on the Vredefort impact site. The link to that is in the description down below. If the Denaliquin impact site turns out to be true, it would be almost double the size of the ancient impact site in South Africa. That is jaw dropping to say the least. For further comparison, this is almost four times larger than the Chicxulub crater, which wiped out the dinosaurs. This impact site is associated with a period of glaciation known as the Hernantian glaciation event, and if it occurred, it is projected that it eliminated 85% of species on our planet. The date this asteroid is estimated to have made landfall is in the late Ordovician, between 445.2 and 443.8 million years ago. It's worth noting that many of the gold deposits in Victoria were deposited during this time. Is there a relationship between the two? There's actually a strong possibility in this case. It might be why the Bendigo goldfields were so incredibly enriched in comparison to any other area in Victoria. And it also might be why areas around Maligal featured the largest gold nuggets in the world. So in this video, we'll be using magnetics to scour the landscape and we'll be looking into what forms of evidence currently exists. We'll also explore what it means in terms of mineral deposition. From what I can see, there's an evident central uplift dome and a multiple ringed feature like what occurs at the Vredeford impact site. It's worth noting that these are rare on Earth and they usually occur on other planets and moons. The issue? This proposed impact site is buried deeply beneath the recent sediments of the Cenozoic Age Murray Basin. So far drill cores have failed to intercept any shocked quartz, shatter cones and other impact related phenomenon, which are telltale signs of major impact events. This doesn't mean the asteroid didn't impact here, on the contrary, it means we need to drill deeper. Unsurprisingly, the proposed impact site takes its name from the town of Denaliquin, which is where the central uplift dome appears to be. I will show you this in a moment, but before I do, it's worth mentioning that post-impact, Silurian aged magmatic intrusives occurred here, depositing granites into the crust. The Silurian occurred after the late Ordovician, and spanned between 443.8 million years ago to 419.2 million years ago, and these granites might be associated with the impact event. On the magnetics, we have a feature that appears to be the central uplift dome, followed by radial rings all around the site. There are also radial fault lines. The proposed impact was certainly huge in its scale with the possibility that it stretched from an area just past Mildura all the way to Wagga Wagga, and it affected areas in northern Victoria too, including the famed goldfields, with the possibility that it extended all the way down south to Sunbury. On a side note, if you like this content, please hit the like button to help you to promote the video. We also have a Patreon if you would like to support this channel. The link to this will be in the comments section and in the description down below. Now back to the cataclysm. Extreme glacial and an extinction event where approximately 85% of all Ordovician species died occurred around the time the Denaliquin impact site is dated. Widespread glaciations and a drop in sea level of about 80 meters persisted into the early Silurian. It's very possible that this is the reason for such pronounced effects on Earth. The Denaliquin impact site is buried by at least 300 meters of recent sediments. It doesn't appear to outcrop anywhere, and it is assumed to be a deeply seeded site. This impact has remained hidden for a long time due to the fact that the area where it occurred underwent a tectonic event known as an orocline. An orocline is a geological term used to describe a large scale bend or curvature in a mountain belt or orogenic belt. This bending usually occurs after the initial formation of the mountains, and it often results in a noticeable change in the orientation of the structures within the belt. Oroclines are typically associated with tectonic processes, such as collision and subsequent rotation of tectonic plates, which can cause the original linear mountain ranges to buckle and bend. This happened in northern Victoria and southern New South Wales. The orocline in Victoria to southern New South Wales, specifically the Lachlan orocline, 
formed during the Silurian to Devonian periods. This large-scale bending and reorientation of the Lachlan Fold Belt occurred approximately 440 to 400 million years ago. Did this impact site contribute something to this oracline? Whilst this question currently remains unanswered, it's definitely something to consider. So what would have happened when this impact occurred? Well, the Earth would have turned into a hellscape. Firstly, it would have carved through the bedrock and produced a massive cauldron of molten material. When asteroids impact the Earth, a rebound effect occurs in the centre of the impact site, leaving behind a central uplift dome. It would have created violent mega tsunamis and it would have produced the largest earthquakes known to man. A quake so powerful it would have been felt in every part of the planet. When it impacted, it would have ejected vast amounts of material into the atmosphere, only for it to rain down as fiery debris laden balls of sedimentary hell. It would have raised the temperature of the atmosphere to unthinkable levels, and the ejector released would have shrouded the globe for an unthinkable amount of time. This is why it's linked to producing the Hernantian glaciation event, as it would have blocked incoming sunlight and plunged the temperatures of the Earth by a drastic amount. While studies are preliminary, it is agreed that we need to drill much deeper to attempt to intersect the proposed impact site. If we find anomalies in a rock like shocked quartz and shatter cones, this would fully confirm that this event occurred. But there's a chance the mid to upper levels of metamorphosed rocks have been eroded, and there's also the possibility for deep mineralization, as it would have turned a land into a molten crater melting and sequestering gold, copper, silver and other valuable commodities that existed in the crust at that time. Due to the heavy specific gravity, these would have sunk to the lower steps of the impact site. The Vredefort impact site in South Africa is one of the most gold saturated places to have ever been discovered. The gold lies within conglomerates inside the impact site. A similar thing may exist in this part of Australia. But what do you think? Do you think this was a major asteroid impact, or are the features in the land merely a part of the many tectonic events that Eastern Australia underwent from the Cambrian onwards? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.